Sure. You know, these uh, presumptive, or well, not presumptive, they're there. These extraterrestrial spacecraft that are scooting around in our atmosphere, they don't necessarily have to have a lot of power, but they can have uh, this uh, anti-gravitic system that the Russians reported is uh, self-powering. It, it takes off by itself. It generates power. Not only is it lift, is it anti-gravitic, but it generates power at the same time. So these things can take off by themselves and float around. And also, George, my research shows that the inertial mass of a system can be made to go to zero. Now, if the inertial mass of, a, of an object goes to zero, you can fly around the whole universe with a double-A battery. So it isn't a matter of a lot of energy. Absolutely, space travel. But, you know, down to Earth here, we have to get something going with this economy or we're going to be in serious trouble. But, we can, you know, I can explain to the right people that all the world's power needs can be acquired by using gauge transformations in water. That's one, there's, there's a gauge transformation in water. There are gauge transformations in copper. These gauge transformations, the scalar physics, but most American scientists are, don't, don't even know what I'm talking about. Most of them, if they studied gauge transformations, only got an introductory rem remark or two. So, uh, well, it, 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 let me just say that the laws of physics are, are, are obeyed. I conserve, in all my calculations, I conserve energy, I conserve momentum, I conserve angular momentum. That's the only way I could operate. But there are peculiarities with this physics. And, you know, listen, George, one more thing, and then we'll take the calls, okay? Sure. This 95% uh, of the universe is unknown to us, dark matter that's and dark right. energy. 75% is dark energy. Now, that's potentially uh, anti-gravitic or energy. It appears to be anti-gravitic. Now, if there's anti-gravitic energy in the universe, why can't there be anti-gravity? Obviously, there is, and it's in abundance. So, you know, this, this is far from wrapped up. There's a tremendous amount to, to learn, but uh, we got to, I'll tell you, we got to get this economy going, and, we, and free energy can do it. And so, uh, well, I don't know. My friend John Hutchinson needs help. I need some help. So, anyhow, I'll conclude it there. Let's take it away. Santa okay. Cruz, California, we go. Hello, Perry. You're up with Dr. Bob Kuntz. Uh, Dr. Kuntz, this is um, my name is Perry. Uh, you are you familiar with the uh, S-Door battery, or uh, Alter Caps coming out this before December uh, 31st, and also the carbon nanotube that was just released this week? Uh, who is this again, please? This is uh, Perry. Perry uh, from Santa Cruz. Santa okay. Cruz. Yeah, okay. Why? Well, uh yeah, I'm familiar with some of that. Uh, those are highly uh, uh, high K uh, uh, dielectric materials in those, but very nonlinear, I believe, in those batteries and uh, capacitors and things. So I'm not exactly familiar with that all, all that much. If you want to write me an email, I'll look at that. Or you can go to my website and uh, get my email address, and uh, I'll, I'll think about that and, and uh, get back to you. But uh, I'm not real familiar with that. Syracuse, New York, we go. DJ, you're up with us. Go ahead, sir. Uh, yes, good evening. Uh, Dr. Bob, I want to ask you about uh, orgone energy and uh, the whole circumstances, uh, your knowledge about Wilhelm Reich and, and uh, the trumped-up charges where he died in Leavenworth, and uh, his papers were cleaned out by the FBI like they were with Tesla. I, uh, have you any knowledge of that, sir? Yeah, I'm uh, familiar with that. I produce some of the energy in my little lab here with uh, phase conjugate magnetic uh, coils. Uh, you go to my website and you'll find something on it God, uh, uh, saying, uh, can dark energy be produced in the laboratory? Well, I believe the answer is yes. I've had this whole room filled with my whole study area and laboratory area filled with a strange ectoplasmic and effulgent energy that radiates everywhere and uh, John Hutchison has it too and so if you produce uh, if you have two currents large scale, have, have large amounts of currents opposing each other you get this magnetic cancellation that I talked about and that produces this scalar energy and there's all many many different forms of this energy but uh, what happened to Wilhelm Wright is a uh, is a scandal and also, there were cures for cancer involving RF energy during that time period. And those people, some of them got shut down and on and on and on. 
You know, it's scandalous. And they're oh. trying to shut down free energy in this country. Not only that some of the mainstream physicists are obstinate and won't listen and, and, and say it's all nonsense, but there are forces at work that don't want free energy. I tell you, I don't want to say the oil companies, but there could be. Uh, I would say Arab oil companies, uh, oil-producing states, don't, don't want free energy. And uh, maybe others, too. And when you say free energy, Bob, I'm not opposed to paying for a little infrastructure and, you know, maybe some kind of a system that allows you to download it from the atmosphere. Uh, but, you know, we we got to get away from the, the archaic way we're using energy right now. Well, you know, uh, Stan Meyer had a car that ran on water. He utilized a gauge transformation at 6 kilohertz. It's, a, it's a, one of the most important gauge transformations uh, there is, that 39 kilohertz, and, uh, the, which is close to the water disassociation frequency. Uh, so the, basically, if you hit the scalar frequencies right, the system undergoes a gauge transformation and emits a negative energy. See, what happens is that you make negative energy at the same time you make positive energy. The negative energy flies off into space harmlessly, and you get the positive energy in your system. That's, how you, that's why it's not violating the laws of physics. You know, these physicists that are my peers keep saying that this is impossible. Michio Kaku says it's impossible. Well, Michio Kaku... Uh, puts his pants on one leg at a time like I do, and he's not infallible, and he's wrong because these systems work. And uh, he said on, on Coast to Coast that he tells investors every day uh, that uh, they should not invest in these uh, free energy devices. So you wonder why you don't have free energy devices. Well, if mainstream, it's not just Dr. Kaku, it's others. Now, he's a nice enough guy. I'm not anything against him. But uh, these, some of these guys, uh, they believe their theories – but theories are, can be wrong. You know, that theories, theories involve assumptions. There are mathematical uh, singularities that can rise up that you don't even notice, on and on and on. And they're changed, too, when better theories come along. Let's oh, go to... yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, and I'll tell you something. Uh, these theories kind of get cooked up. If you look at the original way that guys like uh, Pointing developed the Pointing Theorem, you know, they, they sort of sat down and said, well, if this is true, then that will be true, and if that's true, this is true. So, therefore, this is, this is what we're going to have for our laws of physics. But, you know, they, they, they're, they're, they're not contrived, but they're, they're, they're products of uh, imagination and empirical uh, evidence. All right, next up, let's go to Brian in uh, Shippensburg, Pennsylvania. Go ahead, Brian, you're up with us. All right. Um, <clears throat> I've been listening uh, to all of this. Um, the difference um, with what I heard last night compared to tonight is uh, an actual combination of uh, one fact. Um, when you talk about Michio Kaku it, it, and the physics and all of this, um, what it really comes down to is money. Uh, <clears throat> It takes a lot of money. Oh, yeah. It does. And and th these things are expensive. You know, I blew out my uh, uh, very expensive oscilloscope recently. I need to buy – I'm living off my life. I'm working – all my research is funded with my life savings, and uh, <laughs> it's, it's rapidly dwindling. So I need about a $5,000 uh, uh, instrument here and on and on and on. You know, it's very expensive. And you've got to get the engineering right. It's, these free energy devices don't work by them. You can't just slop them together. They, you have to do the normal engineering practices plus maybe ten percent, ninety percent more. I mean, you have to do it right. In way, but they won't work if if, if you don't uh, if you don't get it right. Now, if you get close, they'll probably they generally take off on their, on their own. They they really just sort of self organize. But uh, if you don't get the engineering right, they won't work. So Tesla. Mm -hmm was a great engineer. Oh, man, he was fantastic. John Hutchison is a fantastic engineer. He, he, he is, uh, whenever you can have him on again, boy, I'd love to be on with him. We, he and guy. I. Yeah, have, let's, let's work on it. The old okay. Hutchison effect, as they well, call yeah, it. Yeah, huh? John and I have been on uh, other programs together, uh, small programs. But uh, he's a wonderful man. And listen, I'll tell you, 
You, we spend $18, $20 billion at CERN, but that's what they're doing at CERN, in my opinion, is inconsequential relative to John Hutchison's work. But this guy lives on practically nothing, and he, he's devoted his 30 years. This didn't happen overnight. He spent 30 years working on this, and his devices are extremely sophisticated, and he is one of the best scientific instrument makers there are. I used to be a scientific 